of PW Comics World, which is PW's online coverage of comics and graphic novel publishing, and I'm also the co-host of More to Come, which is a weekly podcast on comics and graphic novel publishing, and in fact, my colleague, um, Kate Bissim interviewed you, I think, about two years ago in yeah, uh, yeah, June yeah, yeah. 15, shortly after the phenomenon that is Check, Please, uh, I guess, first came out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, but first, TCAP would like to thank the Beguiling and the Toronto Public Library and a long list of awesome Canadian funding agencies that support this wonderful effort. So um, uh, they're very long and some of them are French, so I'm not going to attempt them, but um, uh, uh, it's great. This is obviously an awesome uh, uh, comics festival, uh, and I'm lucky to be here. Now, um, we are up here with uh, Ngozi Kazuda. Am I saying your name? Yeah. Uh, everything's cool? Yeah, all right, all right, all right, great. Um, uh, what a phenomenon, um, and I saw your comics and sports panel yeah, yesterday, was which was also very cool. And I know one of the topics that came up was, um, uh, you know, trying to appeal to comics fans, sports fans, but I may be that perfect fan yes. for, for you. I'm a, a completely goofy sports fan, okay. and obviously a like football or basketball? You name it. Okay. <laughs> it's a ball and guys yeah. chasing it, or women chasing it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. won't. I will pay attention. Of course. Um, uh, I'm not a huge hockey fan, but I am a hockey fan, okay. and I'm still mourning uh, the Rangers getting booted from the cup. Yeah. Playoffs. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but we'll get over it. You know, wait till next year. Um, so let's get going here. I'm gonna. I've got some. Um, where to start? Look, I mean. I'm sure people know your yeah. background yeah, by yeah, now, yeah. but why don't, just in case there's someone, a newbie in the room, go let's go for it. Um, yes. yeah. Who are you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who am I? Um, Where do you come from? How did you, uh, yeah, so, let's all get started. My name is Ngozi Yakazu. I'm from Houston, Texas, originally, born and raised there. Um, I did my undergrad at Yale, that's where I majored in computer science and art, well computing and the arts is my, technically my major, and not double major, don't get twisted. <laughs> um, then I went to the Savannah College of Art and Design to study comics, I got a degree in uh, sequential art. Um, and I got into hockey my senior year of college uh, when I was in a um, screenwriting class and I pitched to my professor, um, interested in this hockey story, I've been like, it's been kind of rattling around in my head for like the last three or four years. And yeah, I just started researching. And as I researched, it was like quicksand. I just started getting sucked in. And when I graduated, I had all this extra hockey knowledge. So I wanted to practice my craft in preparation for grad school. So I started a webcomic, and that was Check Please. I had, it was supposed to be like five episodes long. And <laughs> no, I'm still working yeah. on it. Um, well, why hockey? Why hockey? And, and, and were you always? Did you always want to do comics? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so maybe to answer the first question, or the last question first, uh, did I always want to do comics? Kind of, but mostly no. I had, I thought I was going to major in like a science. Like uh, I, I start like my majors, or what I told people my major was, changed so many times during, uh, during my college year, so it was like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna do biomedical, engin biomedical engineering. Okay, no, I'm just gonna do maybe electrical engineering. Okay, no, electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, okay, computer science. Computer science and arts. Okay, I, it just started like yeah, it's morphing until now. I just make comics. So I mean, I was a I was a comics you engineer. Comics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I need to do. I should just tell, tell people like I, I am still an engineer in a way. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so and but my in high school I was the uh, graphics editor for the high school newspaper and I was also the comics editor. So I would make little daily strips. Um, and then in college, I was on uh, uh, the Yale Record, which is America's oldest college humor magazine, founded in 1871, originator of the word hot dog. Ooh. That's our claim to fame. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but then I, I was drawing uh, comics then and like and thinking about that. So, but I never thought it would actually be a career and, yeah. until I buckled down uh, senior year and tried to get into. Um, I mean, to be honest, I tried to get into a bunch of animation studios, and they weren't having it. So I, I, I knew I needed to improve my draftsmanship, so which is why I went to art school. Um, did you anticipate? I mean, you said you just started it as a short story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at what point did this thing 
like grab you, or rather, your fans grab you? Man, I would say that there are so many different moments when I was in disbelief. Like the first time that I made a zine and put it online, and I told people, "Hey, you guys can buy a zine if you want." Like it, I made twenty, and I made that at my kitchen table. Like I was just like <laughs> chopping them there, and I put them online, and then they sold out within like uh, within like an hour or something. And that's when I kind of realized, like, oh, people for whatever reason they want this, they play, they are interested in this story. Um, but of course, the big one, the big moment was when the two main characters kiss. Uh, Jack and Bailey. That's when the entire comic. Wait, what was That's when the entire comic just like people were losing their minds, just like screaming at each other. Um, and it was funny to me because I mean, obviously, I knew it was going to happen. But I had told the readers like, "Hey, this is this is Endgame," and they're like, "Nah." <laughs> like, we know what you're doing. <laughs> You can't see it. It's super obvious. Yeah. <laughs> and I literally said, oh, yeah, they're end game. So when it happened, people were just like, <laughs> 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 like, like craziness. So, yeah. Well, this is, I mean, some, I mean, at some point, I want to say you weren't necessarily big into comics, but did you like comics? Oh, no. I, it's weird, yeah. I wouldn't say I was big into comics, yeah. but yeah, I liked it. So, yeah. Yes, just the usual? Saying. I mean, well, like what? Like, um,. I, when I, in middle school is probably when I started, well, that's when I discovered fandom. Um, that's when I first, like, watched my first anime after school, and I was like, Whoa. I was going to come, want to come to get to, yeah. to manga and anime. Okay, oh, so you definitely have to go yes. there. But um, I was reading, like, a ton of manga in middle school, and then I started reading um, because of, like, Justice League International and the... Justice League of America that was on Cartoon Network, remember that? Mm -hmm. um, I got into like DC Comics, um, and then when Marvel Comics, they did their um, Ultimates first, the, the, the rebooted uh, comics. Yeah, I can't keep track of all the continuities, but I, mean, I know you roughly can. what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> um, even me. Th that's, that's, what, that's what I was reading, so I, I, I actually read a lot of comics when I was a, uh, a kid. But um, I never thought of it. I never thought of myself as a comic geek. When I'm particularly interested in the, the various sub genres of manga, uh, Yaoi in mm. particular, but also, I mean, personally speaking, mm. and we'll talk just about uh, uh, American sports mm. comics, uh, and that was a topic that came up yesterday. But I also believe that there, no one does better sports comics, I think, than, than Japanese, Japanese manga artists. Mm -hmm. yeah, There's said nothing it. that can <laughs> even come, come close. And I thought yeah. we were actually going to go into that space of talking about that, but we did it, and I was a, a little disappointed. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I agree. Um, and you know how we were saying um, on this panel how when Americans do comics, it's very much like, Oh, Michael Jordan. I mean, it's Space Jam. A lot of Space Jam. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and well, Space Jam is like, you know, a legendary, a classic, amazing. Um, it, it's only so much narrative that you could hold in that. Like, it doesn't, it's not going to, like, you can't really investigate other topics. Mm -hmm. But where, whereas manga, when you have sports and manga, they go everywhere and it's always very intense. Um, and you can have, like, Slam Dunk is. It's it's about it's super intense basketball, but it's also about it's it's just a rom com. It's yeah. really mm -hmm. thin yeah, a rom com. Yeah. Um, then you have Haiku, which is like my fave, um, which is just I mean it's I mean all it's really technical. I think it's a super fan of volleyball wanting to explain the game to everyone else and kind of use sports as a vehicle for education. Um, we can go down the line every. Uh, Could I go, toss in one of my favorites? Please. Cross game baseball. It's okay. an awesome. It's all these little kids okay. with big league fundamentals okay. playing incredible games. Is it more shaman where they have like superpowers kind of? No, no, no. It's it's no. It's it's a straight up baseball, but it's kind of you know it's the the JV team uh, is like you know really uh, put upon, and the varsity is really they're recruited from all over Japan, and yeah. they're, they're monster high school ba the baseball players. Like and, up here. But the JV coach are down here, and yeah. they push them out, and a new principal has taken over, and they're going <laughs> and they own a little team, they push to the side and they're just sort of fodder for the big... Is the, the, is the protagonist of that like a small person? Of course! <laughs> <laughs> uh, somehow or other, these JV yeah. kind of uh, throwaway players, yeah. they get it together and they push the varsity team yes. of future pros yeah, to yeah, the yeah. max and what's going to happen? <laughs>
it's awesome. You, you have one. I don't know. There's, like a, there's endless volumes, of course. Yeah. So this goes on for a while, but the drawing, the, the other, action. Um, baseball manga that I know is uh, Uikitu Furibakute. Did I say it right? It's like, he hasn't ever heard that. Okay. I didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I haven't yeah. Really read it. But yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and it's more. Um, I don't hate the word soft, but it's very soft. It's like a lot of like, no, you can do it, and like hand holding. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, it's not the shout and brand of just yeah, like, like, like you're up against lines. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and like when they draw like eighteen year olds, they're just like giant monsters. <laughs> Yes. This is actually a, a, a rough and really a naturalistic manga. Oh, so good. Okay. It's a really beautifully done. Anyway, okay. enough about what I like. <laughs> I like. They talk about that forever. But that little bit, I mean, this this comic kind of expands the notion. Yeah. Um, um, it's Jack I, Zimmerman. He's an interesting <laughs> cat. Uh, Zach, Zach Zimmerman is a he's a cool cat. Uh, I think for me, one one thing that I, maybe I'm like obsessed with. Ooh, this is a therapy session now. <laughs> um, is masculinity and how fragile it is and how complex it could be. And if it became more complex, it'd be less fragile. Uh, because okay. femininity is pretty, it's pretty policed and it's pretty controlled, but women are able to get away with a little bit more when it comes to projecting, um, uh, projecting sexuality and even uh, in the world of like femininity, you can accept people who are like non-binary, and it's more like the like, gender can be a little bit more frayed at the edges. Where masculinity is, dude, that's dead. He's a little, yeah. he's a little nervous yeah. on the masculinity it's, it's side. Little, yeah. like, a lot of, like, and it's all. I mean, it's what it is. It's just maintaining something that is so fragile that if anything starts to stray even a little bit, you get ridiculed, you get you get um, made fun of, you get bullied. And for me. I, I think I just became a, like um, almost obsessed with that in terms of sports because for sports mm -hmm. is really all all it is is just um, prepackaged and glorified masculinity and the maintenance of it. So, True, but yeah. it's interesting too in sports. Uh, there's a, there's a massive homoerotic kind exactly. of like you know yeah. stuff. <laughs> That sort of is like it's sort of okay no, here. No, but see, <laughs> I, I, read, I was actually in my my studies. Um, <laughs> I was so studying about hockey. Uh, one thing about hockey is that, like, I read an ethnography about it, and it's um, really one of the most homosocial um, uh, environments. And homosociality is when one gender only interacts exclusively with one gender, mm -hmm. um, and because of that nature. You get um, things like okay, let's talk about hugging. Um, there you go. Like hugging is it's not when even when guys hug, it's kind of this thing where you know you have to do the one hand. It has, it has to be a forceful thing. It can be kind of like hey dude. Um, it's okay. Yeah, you know, that's what I know. I'll say it's like dude, no homo. It's like, it's like if you hug your brother in a weird way, it's like dude. What? So it's it's a very it's a very, it's such like when you talk about it being like. There's so many things that are homoerotic in sports. Like, it, again, in my studies, I interviewed a ton of guys about what happens in locker rooms, and you get like the like I, one thing I discovered is like ball tapping, which is literally just guys just like um, <laughs> <laughs> generals, which is really like it's weird. That's like aggressive and wrong, and it's kind of like in order to even. Um, engage with those kind of like homoerotic thoughts. It has to be in the. It has to be a joke. It has to be in the realm of pranking. And then, okay, now like guys, it, it's funny how sometimes men may make fun of safe spaces. Guys make their own safe spaces so they can explore the things they're scared of. So, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll return. We'll return. Sports and okay. all the other things that it integrates with yes. in our lives. Yes. Um, and you know, the people that think they hate sports may not when no. it's you know, kind of offered up in, in a certain kind of way. But you've created this kick ass hockey comic um, that kind of embraces all kinds of sexuality. And so you kind of, it's got hockey and it's making the world a better place. Um, did, is that what you intended to do? No, not, not at all. Uh, when I, and it's I mean, in the zine, I said, I read one of the no. zines where you said, you know, kind of wanted to make draw boys kissing boys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is embarrassing. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that, I mean, it was, it's kind of like, um, that's just kind of what I wanted to do. I, I didn't have any grand schemes. 
Um, but I'm so glad you, thank you for coming to the panel yesterday uh, because I, mean, I could talk about sports forever. Comics and, and sports, there was no way to keep me away. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, for me, like sports has so many different intersections. And I mean, I was almost like late to the panel, uh, like uh, to this panel, which is the spotlight panel for me, because I was talking to someone about sports. Because we were talking about um, like just football and like why we're both not into football. And then we realized it's a lot of different cultural things that tie in. And for me, um, every, like all sports are, and I kind of mentioned this on the panel yesterday, they're just kind of like a vehicle for other topics. Um, like sports and sexuality is inherent because it, sports are seen as a like masculine thing. Mostly men play or play or that's promoted um, as sports. Um, sports and socioeconomics, I think, are interesting because your socioeconomic status does affect what sports are, are accessible to you, and affects and in that turn, it also affects what ethnicities are represented in sports. Absolutely. And then you can talk about like sports as narrative and kind of the type of stories that we choose to perpetuate with sports. Mm -hmm. So like for me, like, it, well, I mean, well, to keep it simple, yeah, I just want to draw boys kissing. But, <laughs> yeah. like, but even then you can unpack, suddenly people are like, well, this is a whole, this is the, like the story is about representing, like representing LGBTQ voices and like, how do you, it's a coming of age thing. And it's all tied into sports. Every athlete has a story and I'm just choosing one athlete's story and kind of, uh, well, just to jump back for a second, I, I, I of PW Comics World, which is PW's online coverage of comics and graphic novel publishing, and I'm also the co-host of More to Come, which is a weekly podcast on comics and graphic novel publishing. And in fact, my colleague um, Kate Bissam interviewed you, I think, about two years ago, and yeah, uh, yeah, June, yeah, yeah. I think shortly after the phenomenon that is Check Please, uh, I guess, first came out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, but. First, TCAP would like to thank the Beguiling and the Toronto Public Library and a long list of awesome Canadian funding agencies that support this wonderful effort. So um, uh, they're very long and some of them are French, so I'm not going to attempt them, but um, uh, uh, it's great. This is obviously an awesome uh, uh, comics festival uh, and I'm lucky to be here. Now, um, we are up here with uh, Ngozi Kazuda. Am I saying your name? Yeah. Uh, everything's cool? Yeah, all right. All right. all right, great. Um, uh, what a phenomenon. Um, and I saw your comics and sports panel yeah, yesterday, was a lot of fun. which was also very cool. And I know one of the topics that came up was um, uh, you know, trying to appeal to comics fans, sports fans, but I may be that perfect fan yes. for, for you. I'm a, a completely goofy sports fan. Okay. And obviously Did you say like football or basketball? you name it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. a ball and guys yeah. chasing it or women chasing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will I will pay attention. Of um uh, I'm not a huge hockey fan, but I am a hockey fan. Okay. And I'm still mourning uh, the Rangers getting booted from the cup. Yeah. Playoffs. What can you do? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but we'll get over it, you know, wait till next year. Um so let's get going here. I'm gonna. I've got some.